In this tutorial, we dive into the world of pressure washers, tackling the common issue of weak output and pulsating water jets. Join us on a step-by-step -step journey as we troubleshoot and fix the problem, guiding you through each stage with clear and simple instructions. Safety tips, DIY techniques, and recommended maintenance practices are all part of this comprehensive guide. Watch till the end and equip yourself with the knowledge to bring your pressure washer back to its full power. Subscribe for more hands-on solutions to keep your tools in top shape. Start by removing all the screws holding the unit together. Take your time and ensure you have the right tools for the job. Once the screws are out, gently remove the cover, being mindful of any delicate components. Now, disconnect the detergent tank hose before separating the pump unit. Navigate through this process with precision and stop right here to follow the upcoming steps. Moving on, it's time to tackle the pump head. Locate the four hex nuts securing it in place. For this task, using sockets can make the job smoother, especially if they are very tight. Expect some resistance as these nuts may be tightly secured. Once unscrewed, carefully lift the pump head. Upon inspection, you might notice some oil leakage and water seepage. Now, let's delve into the heart of the pressure washer at the plunger assembly. Arrange the unit in its proper position and securely plug it into the supply line. There's a risk of electric shock and potential injury due to the mechanical action of the motor. Exercise extreme caution throughout this process. If you're not comfortable or unsure, consider seeking professional assistance. Switch on the pressure washer with utmost care. Now, observe the plunger action closely. Here, we have three plungers, and it's crucial to identify if all are functioning as they should. To confirm the suspicion of a broken spring, take a screwdriver handle and gently apply pressure to the plungers. Take a keen look. If you notice that one of the three plungers is not moving, it indicates an issue. This lack of movement may point to a broken spring responsible for pushing the plunger backward to the wobble disc. It's a common problem, but one that needs prompt attention. In certain cases, a spring may break on its ends, making a visual check misleading. During a visual inspection, the plunger may appear to act normally. However, in a closed condition, the partially broken spring prevents the plunger from moving entirely backward. This results in a drop in water pressure due to reduced plunger movement. To uncover such hidden issues, we'll carefully use the screwdriver again. By applying gentle pressure, we can detect subtle differences that may not be apparent through visual inspection alone. Now, proceed to remove the plunger holding cover, but be prepared, this chamber is filled with oil. As you take this step, you might notice oil spillage. plot thickens. Upon closer inspection, you'll likely find that water has infiltrated the oil, creating bubbles. This, in turn, leads to a high-pressure buildup within the chamber, resulting in spillage. Our conclusion is spot on the spring is indeed broken. This broken spring is responsible for one-third of the total pressure drop, leading to the pulsating water output you've been experiencing.
But there's more to the story. As we pour the oil into a pot, we observe a fascinating separation. Water, a silent culprit, is separating from the oil. As the oil pours, we spot another broken part of the spring sinking in the oil. This is significant as it may lead to deep scratches on the wobble plate and chamber surface, potentially worsening the situation. This oil seal is leaky. This could be a key reason for water entering the chamber, contributing to the issues we've identified. It's worth noting that there could be other factors at play. A previous repair might have introduced water down oil, complicating the situation further. Regardless of the cause, our focus now is to address the leaky oil seal. We've covered the process of replacing the oil and oil seal in a dedicated video. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check it out for a detailed guide on this essential repair step. The plunger spring. Only use springs made by the original manufacturer. Avoid aftermarket ones, as their varying spring tensions can lead to an unbalanced motor rotation. If the new spring's tension is higher, it can increase the motor load, resulting in a drop in speed and pressure. On the flip side, a lower tension can cause reduced plunger action, particularly at high speeds. Choosing the right spring is key to maintaining the optimal performance of the pressure washer. The compressor oil has already been changed, though it's not featured in this video to keep it concise. If you haven't seen the video on changing the compressor oil, make sure to check it out for a comprehensive guide. Now, let's focus on the details of reassembling. The O-ring plays a crucial role here. It should be well lubricated and securely placed in the right slot. Ensure the O-ring doesn't slip when closing the lid. It could lead to an oil leak. Given its spring action, ensure that the lid is closed by gently squeezing it shut. To secure the assembly, tighten the screws on the opposite sides, maintaining a balanced closure. Lubricate the plungers thoroughly, ensuring smooth operation. When closing the pump head, do so securely without causing any damage to its edges. Now, it's time to reconnect all electrical components, including the capacitor. Before connecting the electrical box to the motor, verify the water seal. Overlooking this step could potentially allow water to enter the motor, causing significant issues. Take a moment to ensure the seal is intact and properly positioned. This small but critical check adds an extra layer of protection for your pressure washer, preventing potential water damage to the motor. Note that for routine spring and oil replacement, there's no need to remove the electrical box. However, in this case, we've taken additional steps for cleaning purposes, requiring the removal of electrical connections. This part is featured here to provide clarity, especially if it wasn't covered in a previous video. As we approach the final stages, ensure the auto cutoff part is correctly installed. This component plays a key role in the safety and operation of the pressure washer. Once in place, make sure to lock it securely with the provided locking clip. This safety measure ensures the proper functioning of the auto cutoff, adding an extra layer of protection. Now, for the moment of truth, a final check to ensure everything is fixed properly. Confirm that the pipe from the detergent tank is securely connected, avoiding any potential leaks. Once verified, carefully place the cover back in position and tighten it securely. This last step not only completes the repair process, but also ensures the outer integrity of the pressure washer. Thank you for watching and joining us on this repair journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with others facing similar issues, and subscribe for more insightful content. We appreciate your support and anticipate assisting you with more DIY solutions in the future. Until next time, happy repairing.